Rob Morgan as Sock, <laughs> Sarah Melissa as Sharonda, Pernell Walker as Laura, and Anna Pernell O'Dea as Alike. <laughs> Nikisa Cooper. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Rachel Shanoff kind of discovered me, discovered us, and she was our, um, like, she was our gatekeeper. Um, in 2006, we shot a short the same title, and it was screened at this tiny festival, the NYU Women's Film Festival. And um, Rachel happened to be on the board and saw it and asked if there's a feature that you know she should be considering. I said absolutely, and so I went to a coffee shop two weeks and polished it up and got it out to her and weighed on pins and needles, and um, was so lucky to be invited to the Screenwriters Lab in 2007, and that was the start of everything. And then we're so blessed to come back to the Writers Lab in 08. So I just want to thank. Um, Rachel Shanoff, Michelle Satter, Ann Lai, Elise McKimmy, Sherry Freelo, and the whole programming team. Um, at NYU, I had three or four professors that really told me to not to quit and stuck with me, and that was Ron Gray, Carol Deisinger, Mick Casal, Charles Blackwell, and Bill Riley, rest in peace. And also I want to thank John Tentori, and also I want to recognize that the thing that greenlit us, the, the grant that greenlit us was the NYU Richard Bay Production Fund, and that's what enabled us to get into production. So I want to thank them. Um, <laughs> Incredible cast who, over the past four years, have become my friends. Um, Brad for Young. Um, Brad for Young, my, my, my cinematographer and brother in arms, <clears throat> and Kisa, who inspired me. Uh, I wanted to drop out of school, it wasn't working out. And you know, the professors tell us, you know, your whole class, only two of you are going to make it. So I was telling the Kisa, only two of us are going to make it. You know, let's, let's call the headhunter again and maybe get me back, a job, back in the job world. And she said, two people. Okay, so it's you and who else? And um, <laughs> those words stuck with me. And um, <laughs> sorry. And then um, our, our EPs, we had on this project, which is giving us guidance Spike Lee, Sam Martin, Susan Lewis, Jeff Robinson. Joey Carey, the whole Sundial gang, uh, Julia, Judith, Wendy, the Chicken and Egg gang, um, and for the home stretch, thanks to John Sloss and Bart Walker at Synetic for being the fierce negotiators that we knew you would be. And um, there's another list. I feel like I'm forgetting stuff, but just thank you for everybody who was there for us, and, and, and thank you. Oh, oh, we, we got picked up by Focus Features. So, <laughs> so the question was about the quote at the beginning of the movie and why I chose it. So the quote was from R.J. Lord, and I was reading a lot of R.J. Lord when I was coming out. And to me, that quote means, um, so the quote is, where the bird with no feet flew, she found trees with no limbs. And so to me, that meant she has no place, and there is no place for her. And that's why I used that quote. The rock music was done by an artist named Tamar Kali, and she performed at ASCAP earlier this week. She's amazing, and she performed in the film. And then also, uh, the voice of Alige was, was this kind of acoustic feeling soul, and uh, that artist's name is Sparla Swa. And um, she's amazing. And then the end song, also acoustic soul, was done by Elle Varner. And the voice of Laura was hip hop. And so uh, that artist was Rima Major and MBK Entertainment, you know, helped us, just, just fed us music. And I also have to say that James Spooner, another amazing filmmaker who did a film called Afropunk, really introduced me into punk and rock. And so I was discovering the music as Alige was. So I want to thank James Spooner for, for, discover, for just sending music and helping me, me discover this amazing new genre. And, and not new genre, but all these amazing new artists. And um, yes, yeah, so the music, you know, we used it to heighten the characterizations of each uh, person. It, was, it, it became their voice, or they had their own voice. Say so, thank you for making such a daring and amazing film. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Nikisa. And I was really blown away. Like, I really was. And these are stories that need to be told. So, bravo to you. Uh, so, the question was about the use of tight shots. Was it was a creative choice or a budget issue? Um, <laughs> So for Alike, I mean, you know, her world gradually gets bigger and bigger. You know, she's cocooned, she's in a cocoon. And, you know, literally the moment where she tears apart her room, her breaking up her cocoon. So we wanted to use the tightness to feel close to her and be with her. And, you know, since it seems like the party scenes, we did go in longer lenses because we didn't have a lot of background. But um, mostly it was creative. We wanted to really feel her and be with her. 
and so that's when we use the, the, the closer shots. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about the story of getting this film off the ground and getting financing and everything? Okay, that's an accuser. Uh, it's, it's been a five year journey. Um, and we, I think I said the premier, premier might, we, it takes a village to make an indie film. Um, so, you know, part of that village are like my parents, uh, Dee's mom, uh, some great equity investors um, that put in, you know, we got enough to get the development going, we got enough to get the film in the can, and we got enough to, to uh, you know, get here. So we've just, you know, marshaled forward um, and fortunately had the support of some great grant organizations, uh, Estrella Foundation, um, uh, Center Reach, um, sorry, I'm a little, little bit nervous, Frameline, uh, Chicken and Egg, uh, the Editor Foundation, um, it really, really took a village. Um, and what was great is that each of those times I had to pitch the film, uh, it was great because these guys are so amazing, D is so amazing, it made my job easier. Uh, it, made, it made it easy for people to want to help us. Um, for filmmakers that sincerely believe in the story that we're trying to tell. Uh, uh, oh, some, more, some more people, some more grants. The IFT was amazing. It just really took a village. Hope that answers your question. Hi, um, thank you so much. That was absolutely inspiring. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I thought the film was very well cast, and I'm wondering what your process was, or if the cast wants to talk about what drew them to the story. Can you wave at me? I can't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, the question was about how we got the cast for the film. So, Ed Apero, Pernell, and Sarah were part of the short film. And they just self-submitted. We, we, we did a breakdown on breakdownexpress.com. They submitted themselves. And a lot of them had personal stories about how they came to the project. And then the, the Asha Davis, who plays the love interest, I saw her in the episode of Friday Night Lights. I was like, oh my god, you know, she's got to be Vina. And then um, Rob, you know, B.E. Belasco, our casting director, came in. And I'll let them tell you a little bit more about what their journey was like. Um, I, I was involved in the short. Uh, I was about 17. Um, it was just, it was the greatest experience of my life, you know. Um, I had never really, I had never done anything, and, and Dee was just, she was so sweet about it, and I actually auditioned for her part. But, uh, <laughs> I looked a little too young for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, she, she called me back, and she was like, yeah, why don't you come for the little sister? And, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, and I, I read for that, and it was such a process. I mean, she went to Sundance, the writer's lab, the director's lab, and, she kept saying the feature was going to get made, so finally, three years later, when she called me back, I was like, yes, so, what's up? Um, hi, um, <laughs> my name is Ed Duye, and I, I, I literally just saw a breakdown, I submitted my picture, and something about the breakdown, sometimes when you read something, you know it's going to be really, really good for some reason, and uh, I submitted myself, not for a leaky, I thought, Maybe I'll get to play like an extra in the movie. Like honestly, I wasn't thinking for the lead, and I sent my picture in, and she called me in um, to, to audition for Lee Gay, and um, I uh, borrowed my little brother's clothes, and I showed up at the audition, and um, yeah, I had a lot of fun, and a couple of callbacks, and then you know they told me at the end of a callback that I got the part, and I was very excited, and it's been um, it's been an amazing journey. Um, very grateful. It's like family. Like this is like the best thing ever. Um, it's a life-changing uh, experience. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. I'm Pernell Walker. I play Laura in the film. So I received the casting through my school, Actor Studio Drama School, and um, I was drawn to Laura. I loved how it was written. It was beautifully taken with care. I didn't see any stereotypes. They were real human beings. And for Laura, well, this is funny. <laughs> My headshot was like real glamour, makeup done. <laughs> so I said, I better write a damn good cover letter. <laughs> I put my heart and soul in that cover letter. I just let her know that I am from the South Bronx. I came from a rough area. Hey, Yankees! <laughs> <laughs> and I could connect to Laura in a way that I know that it takes a kind of vulnerability and a hurt to even have that kind of bravado to think that, oh, I don't need you, but you do need people. You do want to belong. So I connected with Laura on that um, 
in that kind of way. She had a real heart, she was a real person. She had some courage, you know, so uh, that's where I came in at. And that's it, I mean. <laughs> Uh, I pretty much was in my boxes on my bed, bug, ridden couch in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> and uh, this manager just calls me out the blue and was like, hey, you got an audition for you. And I was like, I haven't spoken to you in six months. <laughs> and I was like, cool, I'm there. And then uh, we went to uh, NYU and auditioned. Edie Velasco and uh, D was in the room. I went in there with my heart and soul. And they called a couple days later and said, well, actually, no, that was in July. And then they called me in October and said, you got it. And I said, I got what? <laughs> you know, this, is, this is the second time this year I heard from you. And they said, well, they want you for Pariah. And I was like, oh, well, let's do it. And then when I got on set, it was just such a loving vibe. You know, it was such a beautiful, warm feeling. Uh, Nikisa was great to work with. D is the, one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And, uh, puts trust in the actors, so you know, I guess she was uh, confident in her casting. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for my life to change, so if any managers or agents are out there, you know, feel free to get out of Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn, stand up! It absolutely did inspire us in the storytelling, but I'll let Dee talk about that part. I was just gonna say that uh, we, we worked a lot with uh, youth centers in New York and like shipping material. We worked with the uh, Harvey Milk Schools, which is called the Hedrick Martin Institute. We, watched, we worked with Green Chimneys, the Ali Fournay Center. And actually through our Kickstarter campaign, we were able to raise uh, some funds for Ali Fournay Center. And also Levi's is gonna donate $1,000 on our behalf to the Ali Fournay Center in New York City. And Ali, uh, Ali Fournay Center uh, provides housing for, for homeless LGBT youth because um, among homeless youth, it does over index, you know, with, gay youth because they're rejected by their families and they're put out and so these uh, organizations are important because they give the youth a place to start over and to rebuild their own kind of families and just have some self-esteem and, and to feel loved and validated. So thank you for that and we are doing that and we're going to continue to use our efforts to support organizations like that. Thank you.